Hey there Potter Puffs, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited, I finally get to do the creative catch up that you've been waiting for for a while but I've been waiting for for longer because it means all of my projects currently are done. <music> If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and please turn on that notifications bell. I do lots of different types of videos now, but we fall into the bracket of lifestyle, craft and the Harry Potter content that you all know and love. After this, I have two mainly Harry Potter related videos, which you're really going to enjoy. But today, let's focus on what I've been making. I feel like this video's come at a really good time because just Saturday on Halloween, we got told that we were being put in the UK into another national lockdown from Thursday. Oh, another thing I need to update you on is if you saw my vlog last week, I did get my job. So I'm actually starting very soon next Wednesday. So I believe I will be in the office. I'm not sure how it's going to work exactly with COVID, but regardless, the job's starting and I'm really, really excited about it because it turned out that it was better than the one I had. So there we go. At the moment, it's the best time to start a new hobby. So I hope that if you haven't got many hobbies and are feeling a little bit anxious about the fact you've got weeks at home and don't know how you're going to fill your time, then I seem to have quite a lot of ideas of how you could fill your time. A lot of people say to me though, oh, I'm just not good at being creative. There is a creative hobby for everyone. And all of these things I didn't know how to do before and now I can. So take my lead and just try something new. YouTube has loads of content to help you learn a new hobby. Let's start with my newfound hobby, which I've never tried before. It is something you can't see yet. I actually tried candle making. So a few weeks ago, I went into hobby craft. I wanted to try something else. I mean, I have loads of things to do, but I wanted to do something else as well. And I saw this kit for candle making and I really wanted to give it a go. Didn't know how technical it would be, how easy it would be for me, but it just involves really burning wax, putting in different colours, mixing it together, getting it to the right temperature. It's really quite relaxing. I also enjoy the fact that I can decorate the glass jar or pot afterwards. And that's the part of it which I really enjoy because I'm going to try and theme some candles. Another thing that I thought about when choosing this craft was the fact that candles are usable to me. There's plenty of things that you can make, such as like card making, I did that in the past, and I don't really have enough people to send the cards to. Whereas with candles, I use candles a lot and I can gift them quite easily and they're not going to declutter up my house because I can use them. So this kit was £30. Yes, it was £30. You get a lot of stuff. So you get a big bag of wax, which is obviously I've used some of it now. Three different smells. So I got vanilla, English pear and fuchsia and fresh linen. So really nice scents. I also got different coloured dyes and things to decorate it. So it's a really nice set. You don't get any of the decorations in the kit, but it's easy to use things from around the house to kind of decorate a candle. Funnily enough, I have been burning this candle. I did feature it on my Instagram. If you follow me already, then you'll have seen it. And if you don't, I'm under Flourish and Bloss on Instagram and would really appreciate a little follow. Here we have the candle itself. So it's an autumnal candle. I drew the leaf. I tea stained a little bit of paper and I had some stamps to write autumn. Again, the ribbon was something I had. And then I dyed the actual candle with some Hobbycraft Christmas dye. And the smell is the English pear and fuchsia. But really fun little project and I'm going to reuse the glass afterwards. It does smell really good. It's funny that I started burning it and then I remembered I was doing this video, so stopped burning it. Now I could go back to burning it. Okay, so next up, I have updated in the last few days my adventure book. Now you've seen this previously throughout the year. So it's basically a place where I put all of my major kind of things that happen in my life or things that mean a lot to me. And the last thing I updated, apart from the fact I did update it a bit about coronavirus because that's such a big event this year, I've kind of done a little diary entry for that. I featured my finished crochet throw. So this is kind of all about that because it's taken me five years. I wanted to document it in this book and I'll speak about that in a minute. But I enjoy just using my pencils, doodling behind the writing to kind of make the page stand out. It makes it a lot more interesting and fun. And then I use my life print printer, which is something I unboxed on my channel about two years ago now, for printing out little photos, just the odd one to put inside the book. 
because they really then capture the memory. And nobody really has like photo albums really anymore. So this is a nice in-between thing for me to remember big things that happen. It's now November, I can talk about Christmas, but I was already talking about Christmas last month and the end of September. And around the time I lost my job, I started a little project for a friend for Christmas and I needed a box to kind of put all of her Christmas presents in. I didn't have the perfect one. It's quite difficult often to source cardboard boxes which are the right size and shape for what you want. So I actually found a headset box which was under the sofa and it was perfect apart from a couple of things, but this was just a very plain box before. It was completely covered. I bought wrapping paper. I then made this little fastening so I can open and close it. The opening originally was on the side, so this I cut out with a craft knife. I then put this piece of string here and it is decorated on the top, but I don't want to show that because it gives away who it's for, so I need to keep it secret. But it took me quite a while to cover it and then inside are all of the gifts, which is really nice because I've actually done a nice little journal for my friend, which I'm really, really excited about. And I've slipped in little things uh, notes of positivity because obviously this year has been quite a tough one and I think anything that spreads positivity in a present is ideal and so I kind of put a lot of thought into thinking what I would appreciate potentially this Christmas and this is definitely something that I think she will love. As an example I even put in an autumn leaf and I dried it out with a little note and quote. This book is on not on the high street for anyone who would like it and inside it's got a journal for the entire year with lots of different nice quotes and different things to write. It kind of gets you to look at different things in your environment and the world around you and makes you more appreciative of life. I've also got other things in the box, but I've worked really hard to make it a nice little opening experience. I'm still not sure if I'm going to wrap it all up or if I'm going to keep things as they are. That's a problem for me for later. Okay, on to the second to last thing, which is a cross stitch kit. Now this was the last thing that I really wanted to finish before filming the video and it was getting to the stage where I was just going to film it anyway with this half done. But I managed to finish this just yesterday. So this is a cross stitch kit and I've only ever done one of those. I did a tiny one earlier in the year. It didn't turn out quite as I wanted. I'm still very new to it. This one has turned out really, really good. Quite difficult. Um, I had help from my friend Heather who she kind of gave me some little videos on Facebook to help me to understand what I needed to do because there was half increment stitches, whole increment, quarter, and I was like, what? This is meant to be an easy kit. It wasn't very easy, but I got the hang of it and I created this. So this is the hoop and it says, make today amazing. So nice inspirational quote. I'm probably gonna put it on my shelf somewhere around here. You don't have to keep it in the hoop, but that was my decision and I like it in this. I like the whole design. It could do with a stand because obviously they're not really designed to stay in here. I saw a video on how to sort out the back. So I've done a blanket stitch around the outside. It's tidied up all of the messy thread that's inside. And this is the finished result. And to be honest, not to blow my own trumpet, it does look like the picture. I was worried it wasn't going to be readable and you'd have to like squint at it to make out what it was. But it, yeah, it looks really good to me and I definitely want to do more cross stitch kits. I will probably always stick to smaller ones though because I've seen some of the larger ones and I just don't have the patience for them. We are now on to the main event, the thing I've been talking about since about, about March, April last year. I had it in a vlog last year. My crochet throw. You've seen from the thumbnail, I am over the moon that this is done. Okay, I feel like I've talked about it quite a bit, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail of what happened, but basically I started a magazine subscription in 2015 and I ended up doing it quite well for six months. I loved crochet, I started making toys, I started really, really enjoying it to the point where I was selling it on a stall. And yeah, I, I just did a lot. Then I moved on to other hobbies as I do and I flipped between them all. And meanwhile, the crochet blanket just felt like something that was gonna take me so long. I didn't really have the interest or the patience to keep going back to it when I knew it, was, it wasn't something I could easily finish. And I like to be able to finish things relatively quickly. That's my impatience coming in. <sighs> this went under the sofa. I went back to it a couple of times over the years. I definitely did make some progress over the following four years, but not much. 
this year COVID happened and I thought, right, it's the perfect time to do the blanket. I actually just got it out. And even though at times it was like, oh, I cannot be bothered to do this. It just takes me so long. I did about, I did a square a day solidly for about three months. I then went back to work and it was a bit mm, hit and miss, but I still made sure I kept it out and did it. And then obviously the unemployment hit me recently and I again was really focused on it to the point that last Thursday I was finally sewing it all together and doing the border and now it's done. 120 squares later, £360 the subscription cost me, but I've learned a lifelong skill and I've got something really nice to show for it, which is not just a load of balls of wool under my sofa and a half finished blanket. This is some of the crochet throw. Each square is different. Each square uses a similar colour palette. They all match. So throughout the throw, we've got a consistent design and a lot of the squares are quite similar, but each one is unique and individual and followed a specific pattern. Once you've learned the majority of the stitches, I think by the time you get to probably square 30, you've kind of learned a lot of different varieties of crochet stitches, which are more of the universal ones that you would need for the majority of like the patterns. So for me, I do a lot of the toy making and that doesn't really involve that many stitches. So this magazine, whilst it kind of tells you about the more intricate stitches, they're not really ones I use. I had to border each square after it was done. So you generally do it in sections and there was eight sections. And then right at the end, you join the eight sections together and do a finishing stitch all around the outside so that it neatens it up. I'm obsessed. I'm really, really happy with it. I can't really stop looking at it because it's taken me so long. It's something that I'm really going to admire. I don't have really a perfect place to put this at the moment. I'm going to use it, but also be very careful with it. And I have five folders of Art of Crochet magazines now full of patterns, which I feel that I can now indulge in. And I also treated myself to a crochet magazine for Christmas and there are lots of things that I want to make. I won't be doing another throw in a hurry. As I said earlier, I prefer smaller projects, but I can safely say that this is probably the best project that I've ever done craft wise. I can't think of anything that I'm more proud of. And that's why it had a space in my life book because I was really, really proud of myself for finishing it. Anyone who's thinking about doing a crochet throw, you wouldn't need to buy that magazine. There's lots of patterns online, loads of different ways you can do it. And really, if you have one square pattern, you can change the colours of it and easily create a beautiful result. So I would highly recommend that as a nice thing to do that's kind of a mindful activity during the day. I often did it with TV on, podcasts, YouTube videos. It's really relaxing. So what's next then on the crafting agenda? Well, as I said, I am starting work next week, so I won't be able to be as productive, but I'll still be getting a lot done. I got this magazine, which has a pattern to make mince pie Christmas tree decorations, which I really want to try. I've got a nice bag of like mini colours of wool, which will be really fun to use because I have to be really creative to see what I can make. So I'm going to do some of that and I'm gonna make more candles. So I've got lots of new things to try and do, and obviously it will center towards Christmas. So I will catch up with you for another creative catch up, funnily enough, in a few months probably, once I have more things to show you. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've been up to anything creative recently, if you want to start anything creative during lockdown, and I will see you very soon for a Harry Potter video. Bye. Thank you.